Hello guys, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. So I'm so sorry for cutting the other video or the other live broadcast because uh, of some network failure. So today we'll discuss about glaucoma. So now, under glaucoma, we simply need to understand what are the objectives that we expected to know when it comes to glaucoma. So first, you need to know how to define glaucoma. Second, you need to know how to explain the predisposing factors for glaucoma then you also have to be able to know how to draw the cross-section of the eye. Then, you also should be able to explain uh, the types of glaucoma and the management of glaucoma. So now, how do you define glaucoma? So there are many ways on how you can define glaucoma, but I'm going to give you simple definition. So glaucoma has been defined as, this is an ocular disease in which damage to the optic nerve is caused by the increase in the intraocular pressure greater than 21 millimole per mercury, characterized by blared vision. So in the definition, what have you not? The definition is trying to simply say that glaucoma is an ocular condition. The word ocular, it means it is an eye disease in which damage to the optic nerve is caused as a result of increase in the intraocular pressure of greater than what? Greater than 21 millimole per mercury. Then what are you going to see when the patient has got glaucoma? You say characterized by blared vision. So, what is the normal IOP? IOP stands for intraocular pressure. You know, in the eye, there is the intraocular pressure, just, just the same as uh, blood pressure. So the blood pressure in the eye, the IOP, it has its normal range. And the normal range is between 10 to 21 millimole per mercury. So when it is above 21, then the patient will have glaucoma. I hope you get that point. So let's talk about the predisposing factors that will put an individual at a higher risk of having glaucoma. So I came up with an acronym, and this acronym is going to be very simple. It's just known as PUT OSC. Okay, so that is an acronym that is trying to uh, explain the predisposing factors for glaucoma. PUT OSC. So P, it means pew pew dilation to mydriatic drugs. So what happens? So when the pupil dilate, it pushes the iris towards the angle of filtration. And this narrows the angle of filtration. All right? So I'm going to give you a classical example. You can look at uh, this, uh, this angle here. So you can imagine that this is the iris. So when the iris has been pushed towards this curve, it narrows this curve. So when this is narrowed, it obstructs aqueous absorption. And this causes a glaucoma. Then you, it is uveitis. Now, uveitis, this is the inflammation of the uveal tract. So the inflammation of the uveal tract, it causes an imbalance in the production and absorption of aqueous fluid. I'm sure you know that the uveal tract, it consists of the ciliary body, which 
uh, which produce the aqueous fluid. All right. <clears throat> so that. Then T, it is trauma. So when there's trauma to the eye, it will cause it glaucoma. For instance, you are fighting, then someone causes a, a blow to your angle of filtration. It inflames, chafimba chango filtration. What will happen? It's going to impede aqueous absorption. Then O, it means old age. So how does old age going to cause glaucoma? In old age, there is degeneration of the trabecular meshwork. What is the trabecular meshwork? Trabecular meshwork is just like a sefa. All right? You can assume like there is a sefa, a sefa, a konga, a mbalala, a mshte, mbalala. So when, the, when someone is aging, the trabecular meshwork becomes blocked gradually. So when it becomes blocked, it is very difficult for aqueous fluid to get absorbed. And that causes the patient to have glaucoma. Then S means systemic diseases like hypertension. So this causes uh, imbalance in the production and absorption of aqueous fluid. Then C, it is congenital malformation. So, you know, I'm sure uh, you guys that have been exposed on the word, you discover that a child has been born with glaucoma. Why? Because the child was born with a blocked trabecular meshwork. Or maybe the child has been born with a... Con when we say congenital malformation, it is a deformity that someone is born with. All right, so it could be the angle of filtration is blocked. It could be anything that can cause glaucoma. Then it means emotional stress. When you are emotionally stressed, what happens is that it causes an imbalance in the production and absorption. So those are the predisposing factors for glaucoma. Let's talk about the major types of glaucoma that we have. So basically, I'll just talk about the two major types of glaucoma. The first one that we're going to talk about is acute angle glaucoma. So acute angle glaucoma, this is also known as congestive angle, narrowed angle, all right? It is known as congestive angle glaucoma, narrowed angle glaucoma so this is the type of glaucoma that occurs suddenly and in this type of glaucoma the anatomical structure of the angle of filtration is di uh, distorted what it means is that in acute angle glaucoma the anatomical structure of the angle of filtration is distorted. Distorted means it is disfigured. So you can assume that this is the angle of filtration. This is anatomical structure. When we simply say the anatomical structure is disfigured, so it can be narrowed. All right? It means it is not normal. It is narrowed. And this happens suddenly. Okay, I put pen if you boom, and the acute angle glaucoma, it is an emergence, and the patient they present with it, pain. We move on to another type. It is another type is chronic angle glaucoma. So chronic angle glaucoma, it is also known as wider angle glaucoma or open angle glaucoma. The reason why you call it as open angle glaucoma is that the angle of filtration is normal, but the problem is with the trabecular meshwork that becomes blocked, and this happens gradually. So when we talk about chronic angle glaucoma, the problem is with the trabecular meshwork. 
that becomes closed gradually. So for instance, when you simply say the anatomical structure is normal, is that this is the angle of filtration. The anatomical structure, this is anatomical structure, it is just okay. But the problem is the trabecular meshwork. If ponda, those holes, the trabecular meshwork, they are the ones that are closing gradually in chronic angle glaucoma. And this one happens in elderly individuals. So those are the two major types of glaucoma. And of course, we can have um, congenital glaucoma, but they can fall under those types that we have talked about. So from there, now that you understand that we have two major types of glaucoma, in chronic angle glaucoma, pay much, pay much uh, attention. You discover that people with chronic angle glaucoma, they lose, they lose peripheral vision. Bamboo when, uh, when, when, when you are visiting the grandpa, grandma, when you are coming, they will ask you to come close so that they can see you close because their peripheral vision is lost. So they will ask you to come close so that they can see you at a proximal. Okay? So pay much uh, particular, when you see that, you should be able to simply say, ah, maybe she's having glaucoma, then you refer to the nearest uh, hospital clinic. So those are the types of glaucoma that we have. So now what happens? When you're explaining about the pathophysiology of glaucoma, it's very simple. You just simply explain what produces aqueous fluid. What is the function of aqueous fluid? How does the optic disc look like a cup? So you can simply say, uh, aqueous fluid is first uh, is produced by the ciliary body, and it drains or it gets absorbed by the angle of filtration or iridoconial angle or angle of Schlem. Then the aqueous fluid, it takes the nutrient to the back of the eye, which is the retina. However, when there is acute angle glaucoma, or when the angle of filtration has been blocked or narrowed, it will cause uh, impairment in the uptake of nutrient by the retina. And this is going to cause the optic uh, disc to look like a cup and to shrink. Chapwa, causing blurred vision. You explain what happens in uh, acute angle glaucoma and in chronic angle glaucoma. You explain in acute angle glaucoma, the angle of filtration is narrowed. While in chronic angle glaucoma, the angle of filtration is normal, but the problem is with the trabecular meshwork. I hope you can get that. Then, what are the surgical interventions that they perform? For instance, someone has got glaucoma. Number one, they can do trabeculectomy. Trabeculectomy is a surgical procedure where they go to open those holes. They can also do iridectomy, where they remove the iris so that it stops from narrowing the angle of filtration. Like I said, chronic angle glaucoma, it is not an emergency, but acute angle glaucoma is an emergency. Now, how do you manage, for instance, acute angle glaucoma, which is an emergency? So the management is simple. The only thing that you need to take uh, attention is to write the specifics. The management is simple. You write your aims. Number one, to resuscitate the patient. Second, to prepare the patient for emergency operation. Then you write 
primary assessment and resuscitation where you you write the the airway now when you write airway this is the patient with an eye disease okay so the airway is not affected unless the patient was from road traffic accident but in the most never to say the patient owners glaucoma the airway is okay you just simply say in this case the airway is patent therefore not resuscitate breathing the breathing is fine quite a problem unless on circulation the patient can either have tachycardia remember there is uveitis remember there is systemic infections systemic conditions so the patient can either have tachycardia hypothermia or maybe hypertension or hypotension so the only way we are going to intervene is on circulation okay then you write uh, the d which is medications that you can give secondary assessment uh, the drugs you can give are uh, damox okay pilocapine those medicine dexamethasone you write secondary assessment which are the investigations that you're supposed to conduct such as history taking physical examination now when you write physical examination just say upon palpation the eyeball will be hard we usually palpate this eye so when you ask the patient to close the eye like this you try to touch here you feel hard okay upon palpation the eyeball of the patient will be hard in the slit lamp examination or ophthalmoscope i will take the patient for ophthalmoscope which will review capping of the optic disc since you're not the one doing that investigation you simply say i will take the patient for this investigation which will review blah 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 tenometry will show high iop the normal iop remember it is 10 to 21 minimum per mercury for now after that you write you take the patient for operation remember to label the eye of the patient if it's the right eye or left eye whichever you label the eye in physical preparation remember to write the specifics label the eye because if you don't label the eye the surgeons can just go and operate the right eye of the patient because of negligence of an s so make sure you label the eye even when you are working on the word make sure you label the eye that is affected so from here I'm allowing questions. Okay, Rebecca, isn't chronic more seriously? I uh, know, Sister Rebecca, chronic angle glaucoma, it is not an emergence. It causes glaucoma gradually. So that's why you see when someone like uh, grandma, grandpa have glaucoma, they will schedule them maybe for operation, maybe three days, four days, depending with how severity some, uh, it is. <clears throat> Any other questions? If you have any other questions, you can ask. Any other questions? There is anyone with a question you can ask. Otherwise, that was just a short and not detailed explanation for glaucoma. What could be the complications of glaucoma? Okay, the patient with glaucoma can have blindness.
why this phone needs battery ah you should visit the you should go at the clinic sister uh, becky dixon you can whatsapp me i'll give you those uh the answers probably because the phone will go off soon any other questions please make sure that if you haven't liked the page you can like the page share the page so that you get notified whenever we are having a presentation sister mary how are you Okay, thank you so much guys and I wish you all the best in your forthcoming exam. Thank you and I wish everyone who is writing the exam a 100% pass rate. May God bless you.